Hey, welcome to my kitchen. So, uh, I just, uh, for the most part, finished rebuilding my paramotor engine. This is all homemade. There's a lot of uh, custom parts. And, um, you know, there's, there's some people on the internet that started to follow my project, and uh, now they're trying to build their own. And so the first time I built this, I never went around and recorded any of the process because I switched it so many times. And I switched parts, and I switched productions and all that other stuff. And so I decided to take the whole process from beginning to end and videotape it and split it up into sections. Um, because I believe that aside from the way I build the reduction, um, if you have some basic knowledge of tools and you're kind of handy and you have a place to work, uh, in case you can't tell, I'm working in my kitchen right now. So uh, if I can do it, you can do it too. So it's really not all that complicated. There's just a few tricky situations that you've got to follow. And in the end, I have this engine. Um, I happily fly my home-built power motor with this engine. Um, I do want to mention uh, that I don't plan to have any thrills. Uh, this video is going to be long and boring and a lot of talking, but it kind of has to be because it is pretty technical and uh, step by step and I'll be building the engine and there's certain parts I can speed up and cut you know cut out and piece together but overall this is a really long process and it does take some effort and you got to do it right and um, you know if you follow it you might have yourself a paramotor engine. Some of the common questions are uh, how much thrust does it make? So currently I'm spinning a 125 centimeter Monster 185 propeller uh, and I, I, know, I know that my engine spins up to about, I think it was somewhere around 60, 65, 6600 RPM with it. Uh, and through my reduction, I calculated that based on other people's thrust tests or thrust table tests, uh, I should be making actually closer to 60 kilograms of thrust, um, maybe plus minus some of that, which is pretty decent. I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's way more than I thought it was going to ever make, so um, I fly with it comfortably. I fly a 25 square meter wing. Uh, it's an older wing that's really heavy and hard to deal with. Um, and I weigh 175 pounds on a bad day. <laughs> um, plus all my gear, you know, I have a pretty big reserve and a pretty heavy harness and I built a really heavy duty frame. So as I learn paramotoring, I can, you know, take a couple of butt landings and whatnot. So currently I do run a chain reduction on it. Uh, I, I did run into some interesting things that I need to address. One of them is that uh, the chain desperately needs a tensioner because if I tension it pretty tight before I start the engine and then I fly around and the engine warms up, the engine, everything expands and so the chain becomes too tight. So what actually happened is this front plate flexed a little bit and I developed an oil leak. Uh, I could actually watch with the engine running, I could watch the oil like creep up the backside here and just kind of start spraying all over the place. Um, so that's why that's one of the reasons I rebuilt the engine. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, my previous reduction was this guy here as the main pulley. It was a belt reduction. Um, but a part of me wanted to go back to the roots of the project uh, because last year, just a little bit over a year ago, when I first started designing this thing. Uh, I really wanted to do chain reduction and then a lot of people said it wasn't possible. Um, and so here we are, I'm flying with the chain reduction. Uh, I really like that. Um, here's the rest of the reduction and my prop. Uh, nothing too exciting, there is an eccentric uh, hub. So when it mounts onto here, I can actually change how much tension there is coming from the chain. Uh, so. I've ran many calculations as far as what the horsepower is. Obviously, I don't have a, I don't have a dyno for a small engine. Um, and based on the parts that I use, I've talked to a lot of experienced like go-kart and mini bike builders that, that understand these parts and understand these engines. Um, and the consensus is it makes over 20 horsepower. I'm skeptical. I mean, I'm really skeptical, but I don't have a way to tell. Um, but I, I'm, I'm positive it makes over 17 because you can buy kits with parts for these engines. Um, and those kits 
are dyno tested to do over 17 horsepower. So there's a reason for that. This engine is uh, 212 cubic centimeters. So even though it is a four stroke, which are not as strong, this is definitely a bigger four stroke. It has a hemi head, uh, which produces more flow. Um, and I've designed, you know, a tuned intake for it and um, basically every part on the inside, which I'm going to go into the next part or in the next parts, um, are aftermarket or performance or at least modified one way or another. Um, I almost forgot about cost. Um, if I did my math right, uh, so the engine itself, uh, if you subscribe to Harbor Freight coupons, that's where the engine's from, Harbor Freight. Uh, periodically they have a coupon for this engine for $99. But you gotta make sure that you're getting the one you want. There's a flathead version and there's a hemi version. This is the hemi version. Uh, I have to kind of mingle with the store staff to get the hemi version with that coupon because uh, the, the item number is actually not listed on that coupon. Anyway, uh, but uh, so the engine's 100 bucks or 119.99 uh, when it's not on sale. So that's dirt cheap. However, uh, there's a good eight to nine hundred dollars sitting in front of you of parts um, and that does not even include the reduction portion and so I mean depending on how you go there are reduction kits for these uh, engines that cost uh, I think like almost six hundred bucks or something like that um, there's also cheaper versions where you can get uh, enclosed oil filled chain reduction with a built-in clutch it's a wet system it's a really nice system However, the reduction ratio is two to one, uh, but you can get that part on eBay for about 200 bucks. And so, I mean, you're probably looking at a minimum of a thousand dollars, including the reduction, that particular reduction. Uh, but with everything put together, you know, and the nicer reduction, uh, it's still going to be fifteen hundred dollars plus. So, stay tuned. Uh, Let's get into building, but first, in the next part, I'm going to go go over the parts and then the tools that I used and, uh, you know, gaskets and sealants and all the other stuff. And then after that, we'll get into building. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for more and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I want to get to a thousand followers so I can actually uh, start monetizing my videos, which I don't really care about, but I just want to have the ability to do it. Um, you know, and I also want to build followers so my videos get views, um, so people can get some, you know, educational information, which I go to YouTube for that and I love it. So uh, it would help a lot if you would subscribe, pass this video on, share it on your wall, whatever you can do. So thanks for watching.